Delaware is a special and unique state. And when I first took the leadership role for the Medicaid program in Delaware, I had the opportunity to go across the state doing what I call listening tours. And as I did these listening tours throughout the state, one particular subject or issue continued to come up. And that was the issue behind suicide or teen suicide and mental health. And so I figured as United Health Group, there had to have been something that we could do about this issue. And I'm very grateful today to say that we were able to give out grants um, to organizations who wrote, responded to RFPs related to how they would approach um, suicide prevention and education in the state of Delaware. Um, we're honored today to have the governor join us. And his accomplishments in office are many. But perhaps most relevant to us today is his work with making sure that Delawareans have the right health care and access to it, particularly his um, interest with mental health. So with that, I'd like to introduce the governor of our state, Jack Michel. Thank you very much. Good morning. Darren, thank you very much, and thanks to United uh, Healthcare. It's good to be with all of you. I want to thank uh, Secretary Landgraf uh, for all that uh, she does. Um, uh, on, on this issue and many others. Uh, it's good to be with Representative Barbieri and uh, J.J. Johnson. Always good to be with both of you, and thanks for your leadership uh, as well. And I also want to thank Bunny Miller. He's, oh, there he is in the back. Uh, Bunny um, has been instrumental here at PAL for a long time. He and I worked together. It was a long time ago when, we, when this place was first built. One of the uh, really great uh, educators in uh, in Delaware for a long period of time has continued his service to the uh, kids of Wilmington ever since. So always good to be with you, and I think it's a wonderful place to to have this event. Um, you know, this issue is uh, it is so hard. You know, when you meet the families of a uh, of a young person who has uh, who has chosen to take their life, and we all feel so, we often all feel so helpless. So over the last few years, we have tried to take a number of steps which we believe are, will be helpful. Uh, one of them, when I, when I visit schools, uh, I was, I've been struck by how often when I talk to principals and, and, and teachers about the challenges, I'm often struck by how often they will tell me about how many of their students have real mental health issues and oftentimes the schools feel like they don't have the, the capacity or the resources uh, to address them. So a few years ago with the great support and leadership of Representative Barbieri and Representative Johnson and others in the General Assembly, we increased tenfold the number of uh, mental health, uh, behavioral health consultants in our middle schools. We had, so, we had some at the, a number at the elementary level, we had a number at the high school level, through the wellness centers, but we had a big gap at the middle school level. And I can tell you that since I'm, I've been governor, there have been very, we haven't had a lot of money to add. And one of the you know, few places that we've added, and so, certainly we haven't added, had a tenfold increase anywhere, I believe, except for this, uh, the behavioral health consultants uh, in, in our middle schools. We provided funding to train frontline uh, personnel in Kent and Sussex County. We had a real, really a series of tragedies in Kent County a, a few years ago to really look for early warning uh, signs of trauma in children. We worked together with Johns Hopkins uh, and their School of Medicine uh, to offer the highest quality training to all of our high schools uh, in terms of detecting and preventing depression in teenagers. Our health care commission targeted funds to encourage mental health professionals to practice in southern Delaware where there's been a shortage. Uh, and we've closed gap, gaps in our state's support network uh, for child victims of trauma. There's still more to do, uh, and which is why when I learned about this initiative on the part of United Healthcare, I was so encouraged and so grateful. And we know that our partner organizations like those that are um, you know here today and uh, you know, 
Henrietta Johnson and, and the, the Alliance. Um, we can't do it without our, without our partners. There's just not enough, you know, there's just the state government alone can't do it. And so when we find organizations like United Healthcare reaching out to these kinds of partner uh, organizations, um, it's so much better when we all find ways to work together. And I'm really hopeful uh, that on behalf of uh, team and, and you know, young people and families across the state, uh, this in initiative is going to make a real, a real difference. So I want to thank all of you for uh, stepping up. And uh, I'm very eager to hear more about how the partners are going to be uh, uh, using these funds uh, to, to reach kids in, in new ways. Uh, and uh, again, just very grateful to, to all of you for your help. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, before I introduce uh, Secretary Rita Langreth, I'd like to acknowledge um, in the room, we have Representative J.J. Johnson, and we also recognize our Representative Mike Barbieri, and someone who's near and dear to my relationship with the state. I'm honored to have Kathleen Doherty here, who's the Chief Managed Care Operations Officer for DMMA. Um, Kathleen's here. Um, so we've known that um, Secretary Landgraf has spent a lot of time working with families and youth, um, building a stronger community, and we're just so grateful to have her here today as well. So I'd like to introduce um, Secretary Lane. Thank you, Darren, and, and thank you all for joining us today. Uh, indeed, I echo the governor's uh, comments and how appreciative we are to United Healthcare for focusing on this critically important issue that impacts our adolescents, and especially to be committed to the screening and prevention end of, of behavioral health that ultimately has led teens to lose their life uh, to suicide. Uh, it is increasingly important uh, that we do this in a unified fashion through, throughout our state. I also would like to recognize Governor Markell for making behavioral health a priority in his administration by indeed adding additional resources, even at a time that it was difficult for the state to do this, with a focus now on children within our middle schools. So I, I just want to applaud his efforts, indeed reaching younger and younger to protect our, our children. Adolescence, as you may remember, is a most difficult time. I know that at any time in our life, probably when we think back at being an adolescent, it was indeed a time of a lot of change and a time that many times was one that was most difficult. Uh, and we know today uh, that it is increasingly difficult for our adolescents. Multiply that by the added pressures that our adolescents face. I know much more added pressures than what I faced when I was a teen. From social media to viral videos and to Skype, and especially to that ever-present world of texting. Too many young people feel as if their lives are lived under that high-powered microscope and shared way too often with others who don't even care about them or who don't even know them. That is huge pressure. As a public servant, sometimes I feel that pressure, but indeed I'm an adult. Whereas that pressure that an adolescent can feel can actually alter their life. In 2012, unfortunately, we saw the toll of these pressure, pressures and many others that took on teens in our state and their families. We witnessed as too many young people in Kent and Sussex counties took their own lives. In March of 2012, the state called in the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to actually investigate what we were seeing in our lower counties. By the time the CDC finished its work, a total of 11 young people in Kent and Sussex County had lost their life to suicide within a relatively short period of time. And the CDC also identified 116 non-fatal suicide attempts between January and May of that year 
in those two counties alone. What the CDC confirmed is that depression is an important risk factor for suicide and that that lack of connectedness promotes risk to unhealthy behaviors and ultimately suicide. In our latest Delaware High School Youth Risk Behavior Survey, three out of 10 high school girls said they felt sad or hopeless almost every day for two weeks or more. And more than 15% of Delaware girls and almost 13% of our high school seniors overall said that they seriously considered attempting suicide in the past 12 months. The CDC also validated such life stress stressors as conflicts or breakups with a romantic partner or conflicts with parents played a major role. Individuals who die from suicide or attempt suicide are indeed vulnerable and often have multiple risk factors. To support our adolescents, we must embrace a trauma-informed level of care in which the most important question we ask is not what is wrong with you, but instead, what has happened to you? We have to open ourselves to those most personal responses, and we must, we must be willing to listen. The CDC further found that many adults in our community said that a lack of training and education about youth behavioral health and substance use disorders were barriers to suicide prevention. Adults are also worried that there weren't enough providers of youth behavioral health services and the waiting list are way too long. The CDC's other major findings was that the most common form of non-fatal suicide attempt was by overdoses of an over-the-counter or prescription drug. The source of the drug often was, the young was within the young person's own home. In fact, nine out of 10 Americans who meet the medical criteria for addiction started using drugs, smoking, or drinking before age 18, according to the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse. We know addiction in our youth is a risk factor for suicide. The CDC provided us with a roadmap to help identify those young individuals at risk, to reduce the barriers to care, and to connect more of our youth to the behavioral health care that they need, many steps that our state is embracing. These critical grants, these critical grants from United Healthcare will further build on the training, education, and prevention efforts underway across to our communities. And in the coming months, you will hear about additional prevention efforts to reduce the impact of underage and binge drinking, to increase depression screening, including our adolescents among our primary care physicians, and to add behavioral health and addiction prevention to the health curriculum in our schools. I share gratitude with United Healthcare. This investment in Delaware's adolescents, their parents, and providers, this is our future. And to advance this most important prevention step is a step forward for Delaware. This is how we encourage our young people to embrace their full potential and build a healthier Delaware. We know our young people are full of ability and potential. Let's not allow them to disrupt that by not having the resources here to protect them. Thank you, United Healthcare. Thank you, Secretary, for your comments. 
So now we're going to give out the two um, grant awards for the, today's participants. Um, first is Henrietta Johnson Center Health Center. Um, and Henrietta Johnson Health Center, when they wrote their um, grant request, um, the name of their program is going to be focused on social media and all types of media to help um, bring awareness to the issue around suicide and suicide prevention. So I'd like for the representatives of um, Henrietta Johnson to come forward. And I think we'll take a picture with the panel and then we'll ask them. <laughs> Uh, good morning. It's an honor to stand before you this morning uh, as a recipient of the United Healthcare Youth Behavioral Grant for Newcastle County. I would like to take this time to thank Mr. Darren Johnson, the CEO of United Healthcare Community Plan of Delaware, um, Dr. Mitchell Poe, and the United Healthcare Selection Committee. Thank you for the opportunity to serve the youth of our community in an innovative and peer-driven fashion. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of any Henrietta Johnson board members or advisory council members at this time as well. In addition, I'd like to thank Ms. Yvette Houston, the Executive Director of Delaware Futures <clears throat> Program, who is our partner agency on this project as well. I truly look forward to rolling up my sleeves and working with you, Yvette, and the Delaware Futures team to empower and equip the youth of our community to understand and know that healthy mental, what healthy mental health looks like. Thank you. Henrietta Johnson um, Medical Center is a private, nonprofit, uh, federally qualified health center. I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, in 1969, Henrietta Johnson Medical Center, then referred to as the Southbridge Medical Advisory Center, consisted of a group of volunteer health professionals who began to respond to the healthcare needs of the community and Southbridge and neighboring. An ancient Hebrew saying states, do not despise the day of small beginnings. Today, Henrietta Johnson Medical Center offers the community four distinct yet integrated medical practices. We have a primary care practice, a women's health practice, a state-of-the-art dental practice, as well as our new behavioral health Delaware Futures Program um, is based on a series of academic support and program support and programs that provide high school students the opportunity to um, the opportunity to improve their academic performance and to graduate from high school, as well as seek opportunities for higher education. This collaboration between Henrietta Johnson Medical Centers and Delaware Future con um, continues to implement community responsiveness. Uh, the HJMC partnership with Delaware's Future is working together to provide different strategies using social media. Our goal is to meet adolescents where they are, and many of them are on social media. We will be developing uh, a mobile app as well as a separate website in addition to an electronic um, uh, resource guide. Um, these, um, these resources will be available online as well as through their uh, app. Uh, we're hoping and our goal is to have each and every adolescent in the program contribute to the development of this. I'm really excited because this is actually going to be resources that are developed by adolescents for adolescents. That's what excites me the most. 
Um, I am just so honored uh, to stand here and just say thank you to United Healthcare, our board members, to Yvette for this opportunity to do uh, powerful things for our youth. Thank you. And our next uh, grant recipient is, recipient is One Village. Um, and One Village, um, I love this saying, is Raising Kings and Girls Can Do Anything. It's the name of their program. And it's a gender-specific program designed to address trauma and mental health issues facing at-risk girls and boys. So if you have a representative, come up. So I, um, first of all, just so much gratitude. I'm really honored. Again, my name is Chandra Pitts. I'm the founder, executive director, and grant writer for One Village Alliance, among other things. <laughs> We're a small organization, but I, I definitely um, want to acknowledge and thank on behalf of our entire organization, the, Uni the entire United Healthcare team, Governor Markell, Secretary Landgraf, I thank you all, Karen, um, all of you so much for your investment in the lives of youth. I have to take time to acknowledge and recognize the One Village Alliance board members. Uh, we're a small board and a small staff, but we're, we're a mighty presence in the community. Our mission um, as an organization is to take a real community-based, people-fueled approach to guiding children and their families on a holistic journey toward excellence through education. We cannot do this alone, and as a small organization, you know, the funding, you know, I don't know relative to size, this check is humongous for us and will allow us to at least double the work that we've been able to do since 2009 with children and families throughout Delaware with a specific focus on Newcastle County. Um, Rita mentioned uh, a lot of numbers that, you know, I heard some breaths being taken and um, it, it really is gut-wrenching. But behind those numbers are names like Amanda, Denise and Bernicia, that you know will really bring you to tears. So it's very emotional for me to even be here, and I'm more specifically for me to speak after those numbers that were just laid out, and the fact that we engage more than 600 children and families annually, and most of those faces of our children are represented in numbers like the ones that you heard our secretary speak about today. There are real stories behind these faces, real work being done in agencies not only like One Village Alliance and Henrietta uh, Healthcare, but organizations throughout Delaware. And the work is necessary. And it's so important when we're elevating these children and their needs. You know, we're living in a, a real new time. And, and I have to just acknowledge my son, Jalil, who's here with me. He's a 17-year-old high school student. And sometimes we think, you know, you got the easy life. You got it good. You know, enjoy being a kid. But there are some real challenges today. When we were kids, um, the worst case scenario was really hurtful. That kick me sign that someone stuck on the back of your shirt. Um, you know, the, 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 the wedgie, you know, that the guys did. And, and most tormenting for girls if your name ended up on a bathroom stall with your phone number. Now, worst case scenario is having the most traumatic incident of your life in a tormenting time go viral where millions of people laugh, comment, hope, and it really brings um, experiences that you or I may not be able to relate to in lives like those 14, 15, 16, uh, even younger in the middle school age. So I think it's not only important to be responsive to what's happening in our communities, but like Governor Markell talked about in his work in middle schools, really be proactive and engage our children in a way that we know they're in love. So Girls Can Do Anything allows us to really make a big statement to girls to let them know that no matter what someone says about you, be it a family member, a friend, or foe, that girls can do anything. And through this work, we're redefining womanhood and what it means to be a girl. Everyone doesn't fit into one image of beauty. Our hair is not the same. Our skin is not the same complexion. But you are beautiful. And not only do our girls struggle with this, but women who are right here in this room 
know these struggles today and have definitely known them throughout our lives. So we want to give girls the power to let them know that you define your image of beauty, you define what sexy is, and those um, decisions and behaviors are yours to make. And we want girls to own them by connecting them to phenomenal females and building their communication skills within their own families, their friends, their peers, and their communities well beyond to grow into responsible adulthood. Our work with males is more specific while we affirm that all girls are at risk. We want, we know that um, we have a very diverse population of girls that we target. While our work with males is not exclusive, it really is targeted to men and boys of color, specifically in the African American community here in Delaware, where there's an American psyche that says to a young black male that you will end up one of two places by the time you're 25. We're speaking a destiny that our boys are walking right into. We have to start speaking a destiny of brilliance, excellence, connecting them to amazing men like the CEO here of United Healthcare, who are real life role models for our boys <laughs> and amazing images for um, children like my 17 year old son to see. The possibilities are not one in two, but they're one in two million for our children. It truly does take a whole village to raise a child. And I'll end with a Dr. King um, phrase that really impacts me, a quote from him, and it says, that the greatest tragedy that this um, that we will have to record through this time of social transition is not the callous clamor of the bad people, it's not the bullies, it's the appalling silence of the good people. We have to ask ourselves, what will the good people do? And I applaud all of the good people who are behind this work today. Thank you so much on behalf of One Day Again. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Representative Mike Barbieri, who has been a tireless advocate for increased resources for mental health issues through his legislative leadership as the House Chairman of the Health Committee. Representative Barbieri. All right, I get the honor of thanking people. I want to start by saying what was said in the last presentation. It takes a village to raise a child. All too often, we seem to push that on, saying we need better parenting. But we do. But we also need a village to support that parent and support that child. And I think today, what we see is a village come together to support people. We cannot do it alone, especially in this days. We will not and be able to do it alone. So we must do it as a village. So I'm honored to be here with this great group of people who are representing the life's blood of our community. We have in this state, it's a small and intimate state, and we have in it someone like the governor who has been a champion of behavioral health services since he came in office. He's been experienced, he has experienced a number of tremendous budget issues, but at no point in that whole process has he deviated from the idea that he has to help those who are less fortunate. He has to help those who have behavioral health issues. And he's kept that at the forefront, no matter what the cost. And I have to give him great credit for that. We also have with us the secretary, amazing woman, who the governor did a wonderful job presenting a few days ago. She is an amazing woman who is purely a community, community advocate. She doesn't see how her group can help do something for communities, but rather how she can strengthen communities to make them do something for themselves. So it's not all government intervention, but really community and people intervention. And that is really critical. We also have dedicated providers of services, Henrietta Johnson and One Village. These are true representatives representations of strong community efforts, trying to go from the grassroots, moving its way up, working with the people. And last but not least, we have United, Beha United Healthcare. This is a large insurance company that has chosen to take on providing insurance services for our citizens. Okay, that's a big responsibility, and it's not an easy responsibility. But not only did they see their job as to provide this insurance coverage, but they saw their job as improving quality of life. They saw them jo their job as being important community citizens. So they wanted to be with Delaware, not work just for Delaware. They wanted to be with Delaware. And therefore, they put these grants out. They were able to help small community projects strengthen their communities because their job cannot be done just by providing insurance, but they, have to, they know they have to provide and strengthen the community. That makes everybody's life better. Our suicide rates are high in this state. They're a little higher than the average. We have to do something to address them. Being in the mental health field, 
believe me, there is nothing harder than dealing with the hopelessness that a person who is contemplating suicide feels. There is no way out. There is no hope. They've been, you know, intimidated in the media in some fashion through social media. They just feel there is nothing for them. And for these programs that are willing to reach out and to help them, to pull them out of that abyss, it is critical and important. And I really, my, my heart goes out to you, and I thank you for being willing to step up to do that. It's a critical job. We can only do, and we have great community partners like United Healthcare. So let us all think of this as a way that we can model working together, business, community services, and communities, all providing a better state for Delaware. Thank you. So I'd like to, again, congratulate our two grant recipients today. Um, we know you're going to do phenomenal work, and we look forward to seeing it all. And I'd like to just thank everyone for coming out today, and have an amazing day. Okay.